Okay, Chartism. Now, Chartism is probably a favourite question, the one I would really like the most, and I would really like a why question. So, why was there pressure, or why did Chartism grow? Well, primarily, there was a lot of disillusionment over the 1832 Act. The working class had been involved during the days of Maine pushing for reform. People like the Tolpod and Martyrs have been brutally treated by the government. So people wanted change. They felt let down by the middle class and they started to push and wanted their own working class movement. The second reason was the Poor Law Amendment Act of 1834. The new Liberal government wanted to um, attract these mid new middle class voters. The middle class voters did not want to pay taxation for poor people. So what the Liberal government decided to do was move from what they called outside relief, giving support to people outside, and forcing people into indoor relief, into workhouses. So poor people felt they were being sent to prison. Purely, their crime was being poor, which was unfair. Thirdly, and probably more, most importantly, Charter was known as a knife and fork movement and became much more popular during the economic downturn. This was particularly happening at this time because of increasing mechanisation and skilled workers, weavers, people working in the cotton industry in particular, began to join this group. So there are the three main reasons why Chartism grew. Now the methods, what do they use? Well, let's look at the leadership first. We had the moral force of William Lovett. And the kind of things he was in favour of was obviously petitions. And there are three petitions, 1839, 1842, 1848. He also believed in educating the working class with his new move so people could learn to read or write. He established the NCA, which is basically a National Chartist Association, which was to show that the Chartism was responsible. On the other hand, the other leader was obviously Fergus O'Connor. He believed in physical. His method was the Northern Star, which incited people had mass meetings, they had the Chartist Convention, which was again to show that the Chartists were responsible. Other things that were going on at the time was the Newport Rising. This is when Chartists were arrested and um, put in the hotel. Chartists attacked it. In a way, that did not help Chartism. It enabled the government to really, really crack down on Chartism. And again, this is, would be another good question. Why did Chartism fail? Well, I would use the acronym in here, SMELL. So write down smell vertically. S stands for, in fact, if I go on the slide, the strength of the British state. They used the new police force, they used soldiers, they used the railway to transport troops and police around the country to try and stop trouble for what happened. They used spies as well. Secondly, the M, the members were not united. So they couldn't quite decide about what they wanted to do, physical, moral, different parts of the country had different ideas. Thirdly, the economic boom of 1850-73, and really that destroyed Chartism because people just were working and earning money and were happier. The L, well, the leaders were not united, and obviously that really lost the direction of the party. Probably more importantly, they lacked middle class support. The middle classes became more involved in the anti cornwall League, which was much more successful because they only had one aim. You know, one of the biggest failures for Chartism is they had six aims, it was too much to ask for.